Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you? I think I'm going to have to take some scissors to my bangs. Not, don't tell Lindsay. She gets really, ah, really PO'd when I do that. But, you know, what are you going to do, right? So today is Monday, June 22nd, in case anybody's keeping track. I know I barely am. I am doing this every day, though. I go and I open up. I actually have a paper calendar. I'm old school with that. And I will... Um, take a look-see to make sure there's nothing on my calendar. And the crack up is sometimes there are things on my calendar and it's like, how in the world did that happen? So I'm, I'm going to brag. I know how to say Brassica. <laughs> it's not Bariska. It's Brassica cabbage. In fact, I called my friend Cindy at Alden Lane this morning. I go, how do you say it again? So, and I go, it's what's that word that's bariska? And she goes, what are you talking about? And I said, that purple cabbage. And she goes, that's brassica. It's like, oh, okay, thank you, brass i ka. Right? And if it's not right, I laid at Cindy at Alden Lane. Uh, as I mentioned on Friday, sadly, um, Alden Lane has been canceled this year for obvious reasons. And we will meet up in 2021 when we can put this all behind us in our rearview mirror, hopefully from my lips, right? And we are done, okay? Now, today I am going to show how, how to do corners on a binding and then how to do ends. And half of it's going to be pink and half of it's going to be green. Um, you guys all voted on my Facebook when I put up what I was going to be doing. You said, oh, do the green, do the green. I don't know. I want to do both. So, first of all, you've heard me speak of my friend Robin, Robin Maimoni, who saved the day when I have when I was going through it with my parents and still now with my mom. She is my person, but she's kind of on my poop list right now. Yes, she is. But then she's on my good list too. So they invited John and myself to go up to their, um, their glamping this weekend and to go up and boat ride on Berryessa. And I was like, yeah, what can I do? What can I do? And she said, no, you don't have to bring anything. And then she said, well, you could bring a cherry pie. I said, well, do you have the cherries? And she said, yeah. Now, these are not just ordinary cherries, you guys. It's from Capsules in Sister Bay. And it is Door County Cherry Goop, all ready to go. You get yourself a jar, and uh, I make it for Thanksgiving, and then they all, so then Robin loves it, so then she buys it. She said, tell you what, you can you can make a cherry pie. And I said, but I don't have any cherries. And she said, well, I do. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, oh, Door County, Wisconsin. Everybody knows where Door County is, John. Anyway, Sister Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. If you don't know, you're missing out on one of life's best pleasures. But anyways, so I went and I, I thought, okay, if I could have her cherries, because I'm currently out, um, I will go and I will buy the crust. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, I'll make the crust from scratch. And so then I realized we couldn't go up there because there were going to be other families there. We're going to be taping here mid-July, and we're promising the crew that we're staying in lockdown till then and our guests. So... So she sends me this picture. She sends me this picture of uh, KD and and to, I think took the picture. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, look at the new the new use of my ruler. And I'm sitting here looking at this, going, "Yeah, that's really cool." And then this morning when I'm uploading this whole thing, I'm going, "Wait a minute, that's pie crust." And so I wrote back and I said, "Are you guys making the cherry pie?" And they wrote back, "Uh, yes." <laughs> so doggone it. That should have been me. Anyways, uh, you guys have continued to send me pictures of your sequoias, and yay, let's take a look-see. So this is Wendy's. Look at that. It's just perfect for the 4th of July. Absolutely adore it, okay? And then let's take a look at Beverly's. Wait, I want to go back here. I want to go back to Wendy's. I I just heard the vacuum cleaner go on. So so look at that, that flag, you guys. And I also love that she did the um, 
cone flowers along with the other ones and I don't know what they are, but I wouldn't have thought of that. That's the great thing about when you do something like this. People come up with things that I would have never ever thought of, including this one. So in those two negative spaces that run parallel, that run up and down and parallel to each other, she put in words along across the top. And this is truly her COVID quilt. And it's reminding her of faith, hope, and love, which are probably one of my favorite words in the Bible. And then Janet, I just got this one this morning. Look at this. And I'm sorry it's a little bit blurry, but that's as large as I could make it. And Janet said the bird is from Nancy Halverson's book, Tidings. So you've got this perfect playground in the middle that you can do whatever you want with. So that's just really super cool. The other thing, oh, so let me go back. Now I've got a word from the Brassica. We have ordered 300 and something for potential kits, all right? They're gonna start coming in. Some of the kits will have the original solids in it that I'm using, and some will have Jane Sassaman's new fabric that are hand dyes. They almost look solid, but they're beautiful. We pray to start shipping July 1st, and we will not announce, we will not make it live until nine o'clock Pacific time, because I know we really got had, okay, on the West Coast. But what you can do, um, you can't order it, but you can go to thequiltshow.com, you can go into the store, go to fabrics and kits, and the first drop down will be this mystery, the mystery quilt. And the reason I call it the mystery quilt is I don't know what I'm teaching you. We're just gonna play together and see what happens. You can see I've already started working on blocks up there. And I don't know that I like that purple one. But anyways, um, you can heart it or like it or put it on your wish list. And then we know if we're in trouble and we need to get more. So please don't heart it unless you have an intention of purchasing it. It's just a, we don't ever want to have happen what happened. All right. So let's take a look back here. Oh, no. One other thing. On the last, on Friday, I kept saying foot pedal. No, I kept saying presser foot instead of foot pedal. And I, when I was listening to it, I'm going, what the heck? And what I meant to be saying is every time my hand goes near my needle, I take my foot away from the foot pedal. Take it away. So there's no chance of something horrible happening. Secondly, somebody said, what did you mean by turn of cloth? I don't know. I can't. I don't, I don't know. I have to have COVID slack cut my way, okay? Oh, also John, and I saw it today, if you go to today's newsletter, there is a quilt in there that the close-ups, you guys are just gonna freak when you see the straight line quilting on it. It is magnificent, magnificent, okay? So let's take a look-see at this, at this particular quilt we have going on here, our Sequoia Sampler. So lots of times I will do multicolored uh, borders, all right, uh, bindings. See, there we go again. And in this case, I decided, I couldn't decide between the pink and the green. If I had to pick one, probably the green would have been the correct one. And so when I do two colors, I never break it like right in the middle, like there. I like to do it asymmetrically. So you can see up here is about where I'm going to end. And then you can see down here is about where I'm gonna end. I've marked it with, you probably can't see this, but I've marked it with my purple pen where I wanna end. And that's just a suggestion, okay? So let me take this down. There are some really new, new people on here. And I, you, you have no idea how much I adore that, you guys. It just makes me super happy. So let me get this under here. I wonder if I can pull out the fiber new um let's try this okay so you can see here where the mark is all right and what you're going to do when you do a um when you do when you close up the, when you close up the binding what you you know i think i gotta hold it up all right it's not working under that little thing at all. So you can see there that that's where the mark is. I've sewn the pink down 
and then I'm going to leave an overflop like this, all right? I'm going to start sewing the green down, and I'm going to leave an overflop. An overflop of maybe four or five inches, okay? Because then we can go back and minutia it and make a um, make yourself the the seam that closes them together. So I am going to sew. This is a little bit like watching paint dry, but hello. Okay, our cleaners are here today, so. Let me get in here. There we go. So I'm just gonna start sewing down here with the green, and you can see up here is that, and you can see if I go like this, it goes way up. I do, oh, the foot that I'm using is a the 97D by Bernina. It is a quarter inch foot, but it has a bigger lip on this side so that it helps feed everything through properly. I did cut the binding at two and an eighth. So I'm gonna start down here. Okay. And I'm gonna come down here, lining it up. And you can see I've trimmed everything off, the batting and the backing and all that good stuff. Oh, I gotta go slow. So I'm making my way down to the corner. And I'm, I see an issue here that I will share when I get down there. I cut this, I cut this end off square and you can see that there's just batting there. That's not good. So I'm gonna cheat that a little bit. I don't wanna see batting. Now when I get down, to the end. Gosh, I wish I could take this out farther. Only a little bit. Here is the end of the quilt. All right. Go down. Here is the end of the quilt. I want to stop one quarter inch before this end. Now I can use the markings on my on my foot or I can go in there and mark it, and great, I just dropped it. There we go. And this isn't the part that I promised I'd be teaching today, but I thought there are newbies. As soon as you get there, you're gonna backstitch, okay? Then you're going to take it out, and I'm gonna fold this back on a diagonal like this, okay? And then I'm going to fold it down. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to go where the quilt top is. Actually, I'm kind of splitting the difference because that, that corner is problematic. Then I'm gonna go all the way to the edge and start in. All right. Here we go. And the good news is Oh, sorry, you guys. The good news is, is that my quarter, my little points seem to be exactly a quarter inch, which makes me very happy. This actually, this quilt, uh, te technically for me was very, very successful. Oh, sorry. Oh, gad. Okay, I'll slow down. I know John's coming in here to warn me of the issue. Okay. Now, sometimes when you sew on your binding, it kind of wants to go wee wah, and it kind of does with most of my 37 foot, which is a quarter inch on each side, and it's because it doesn't have this to help grab the feed dogs. Some people like to use their walking foot and then um, adjust the needle position. I just like my walking foot for straight line quilting. And see how we've got it on a diagonal here? I've pieced it together, and that's why I'll be showing you a little bit how to do it. Oh, great. The bobbin is out. Hit the hive. That says hit the hive. Worse than that, I need a new bobbin. I can't believe that. Okay, hold on. 
John goes, hit the hide. That's the least of my problems right now, people. What's going on? Okay, so this is how you change a bob in live, okay? <laughs> um, I hope I have one wound. Yeah, how to change a bobbin live. Here we go. This is called Grace Under Pressure. Oh, for crying out loud. What have I been sewing? What have I been sewing so much that I would run out? I don't know. Oh, this, this is like not making... I am a trained professional. Don't you ever forget it. Let me get my 80 weight thread. Are there any questions coming in, John, while I fiddle faddle with this? He's if you have any questions, now's the time, all right, people? Now's the time. <laughs> he will bring them in or come read them behind me. All right. I won't wind the whole bobbin, but I'll get enough in there so that I can... I can't believe I ran out. I mean, these bobbins are huge, you guys. Absolutely huge. So... We'll just do a little bit. So I've, I'm hooked on a new mini-series. And I'm kind of afraid to tell you what it is because it's full of everything that you don't want a little kid to see. Let's just put it that way. But it's so good. It's Outlander. And again, there's there's sex, there's violence and all this, but it's so good. It's about um, a young woman, a nurse, who gets transported to, into time back to Scotland when... Um, back in the good old days when guys wore kilts and all that good stuff. Oh, it's so good. And being of Scottish, being of, I'm a bohunk and I'm also bohemian. I'm German and I'm also Scottish. And I didn't know we were such a rugged crew of people. <laughs> okay, let me have a little scrap of fabric and make sure we're good to go. All right, people? So, my friend read the book. I'm not a big reader. Okay, that's good. Yay. Let's get back down here. All right. So where did we leave off? Let's see. We left off right there. Oh, now see this too? I don't really like how that swerves in. I really, really like to keep a really good quarter inch on this. Now, some people like to cut their binding two and a quarter. That's for a fatter binding. I like really tight bindings. And I will sew it down by hand using my 80 weight because it's really strong and it hides like silk. Now, on thequiltshow.com, we have a ton of different binding techniques, okay? Ton. And what you can do is just go to the, when you log in, go to the top and just put in binding. And then you'll see all the different shows that come up that have different kinds of binding. This is kind of binding 101. Ricky Timms likes to do fancy pants binding. And so, I mean like really, well, it's why he wins the ribbons, let's just get real. And it's not lining up perfectly there because I know that the fabric is falling short of the backing, the binding, of uh, the batting. Backing, binding, batting. Okay, so right on this particular presser foot, I showed you how to mark it before, but this is a quarter inch from here. So if I come and just go up to here, oh, back stitch, I know I'm good. I'm actually gonna cut the thread. Yep, see? Okay, very good. So you go like this, like this, like this. Seriously, what have I been sewing that I would run? I should, I, I guess I'm giving away too much of myself here because what the heck, right? All right. Here 
There we go. Whoa, sorry. I'm my um I, I shouldn't be going to the horse races here. Okay. And of course, after you cut your binding, then you saw then you press it wrong sides together so one side is an edge that's raw and the other side is finished we've even done single layer binding on the show meaning not double but if I like double but like let's say it were really um, delicate quilt or delicate fabrics or something like that you might want to consider that golly golly here we go Okay, you know what, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to go to the other side where we just had the issue. So, here's what I need to do now. I'm going to pull this up. Okay, there we go. So, I want to, ha I want to join it right in there, all right? So, the first thing I need to do is I need to cut off a li a the, an end, an end, okay? I want to know, I want this, I want, this was folded, I want to know what this measurement is right here, all right, from here to here. So then I'm going to, I'm going to cut this off, say right here, all right, and then I'm going to bring my pink one, oh shoot, I'm sorry, my pink one. And I'm going to overlap it. See that right there? You can see how it's overlapped. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here like this. And then I'm going to cut the top. Now the truth of it is I come in, I take this cut. But I'm going to shave off a little bit more, about an eighth of an inch. Otherwise, sometimes I end up with tucks. I'm a, I have to pull this out here to do it, you guys. Okay. Then, I'll take questions in a minute, John. Then, what you do, and this is a little tricky based on, this is very tricky based, okay, I'm going to have to do it and then bring it in. I'm going to take the two fabrics Shoot, I gotta do it in front of you, or you're not gonna understand it. Okay, this is really tricky. So I'm gonna take this and this, and I'm gonna lean, go this, like this, and I'm gonna drop a pin in, because it, it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it's not, it wants to wee wah on me. Okay. This whole thing, Ugh. this camera hanging on my machine. Hit the hide. Hit the hide. It's the least of my concerns right now. Hit the hide, John. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, I didn't pin it in all the way. All right, like this. Then I'm going to sew it corner down to this corner, corner to corner. Gosh, I know we've done this on the show and it's just this camera situation is making this, this side short of almost impossible. And frankly, when I promised to do this, I was concerned this could happen. Boy, I hope I'm doing this right. Yeah, I am, okay. So actually, I'm going to sew, changed my mind, from this corner. Ah! This corner down to this corner. Is that going to be right? Yeah. I see you down there. Right there, I see you. You could mark it. But do I? No. That out from under there. I'm going to head down to this corner. I 
I think I just found my limitations with this camera right here, right now, honestly. Then I pull it and there it is. Now, I will go and I will cut this inside out, like right along there, cut the tail off, the triangles. Okay, probably would go iron it, okay. And then I would just go and sew from here to here. And I am not gonna do it because I do wanna iron it because I, I mean, it will look funky if I don't. So, oh, oh don't worry, we get it. Thanks, Rodney. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that. <laughs> now, John, did you have some questions? If you do, oh, let me go grab them. They're all over here somewhere. All right. <laughs> I'm glad I put my deodorant on. <laughs> here we go. All right, um, when you turn your binding on the mitered corners, do you trim off some of the bolt to make it lie flatter? No, I don't, mm -mm. I do not. Let's look at one of those mitered, let's look at one of these things. Okay, I have to go back to this. This will be my friend. Then when I turn it around, thank you for asking that. You actually want that little stuff in there to help poke out the turnaround. So now that's on this side and then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna fold it on this side. And if you took out that little bit in there, it would, it would sag on you. So that's the back and this is the front. Some people like to actually sew this down together here. I don't but I don't go for ribbons either, you guys. So thank you for that question. That was a really, that, that was a really good question. Okay. Do I always use 80 weight on my bob, on my bobbin? Oh yeah, by the way, somebody just said um, when they do their, um, their sewing together the miter, joining the cloth, that they keep a longer tail, a longer in-betweener, and if you do, it's easier. I probably cut it too short, so thank you on that. I always, always use 80 weight on my bobbin. Always, period, end of story. Because it's just so much finer, and the accuracy steps up. And in fact, when we do this, and we're gonna be working in solids, I would really recommend you get the 80 weight for your bobbin, because with solids, it has good news and bad news. You don't have that many decisions to make when it comes to color. But your piecing accuracy does show. <laughs> um, how do you cut the binding? I cut it uh, two and an eighth inch wide is what I cut it at. What size do you cut binding strips? How? I, okay, there we go. Um, told to come down another quarter inch after the turn. Yes or no? Come down another quarter inch after the turn. I don't know, but if it's working for you, please do it. And I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious. I, I don't quite know what you're asking. Maybe somebody out here does. Um, let me take this off and I might be able to see questions. What brand is uh, 80 weight is my favorite? Well, it would have to be mine. <laughs> it's Quilter Select. <laughs> and you can get it from um, your local Quilter Select dealer or you can get it at thequiltshow.com. It comes in 40 colors. So, binding straight to grain. Thank you, Nene. Nene. Is it Nene? Thank you. I, I do straight to grain. I do cross grain because it has a little bit more of a stretch than length of grain. I only do bias if I'm doing a scalloped edge. I used to think that bias was the way to go until I made a quilt and the binding actually started kind of rippling. And it's, you know, I was on an older machine. It's a long time ago. But bias can be tricky on its best day, 
and I and I I know the thought is is with the bias you've got a stronger thread count because it's not like this it's like this but I'll take this for all the issues that this can cause um, guess I said two and an eighth is what I said for my binding two and an eighth but guys my binding I mean I I like a really small binding okay and even this at two and an eighth when I take it to the back and overlap it I still have a ton of overlap so the only reason I don't do and I am using a thinner batting. I guess that makes a difference too, right? I'm using a thinner batting. When I do just two inches, it, 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 it's too hard for my hands to hold, okay? When I'm stitching it down by hand. I've seen people on TQS do one and, one and three quarters, which absolutely blows my mind. Uh, yes, there you go. There's somebody that says they cut theirs at two. And the other thing is I use like little girl hair clips or those little red clips to hold it down while I'm sewing so that I don't get a bunch of carpal tunnel going on. No, don't come down the quarter inch after turning the corner on the biting. Okay, I guess you knew. Just remember, we are, we are, guys, we're quilters here, all right? Thank you for the debacle, for understanding my debacle. What I'm going to talk about on Wednesday, a couple people have asked about blocking quilts. And so I'm going to talk about blocking quilts. And then pretty soon we'll be getting into the scrap lecture. And we will start cutting fabric, I think, this Wednesday is when the bolts are going to be coming in. And Pam Vieira McGinnis, Pam Kitty Morning, a lot of you know her. She's going to dig in and help too because we want to get it into your hands, right? So remember, just go like it in the shop if you think you're interested so that, well, even more than interested, like you're ready. I'm not going to take your money and I'm not going to come with a big Bruno to your front door, you know, if you, if you don't if you heart it and then decide you can't do it. But this is really how we're trying to discern how much to get so that we can take care of you properly the way we want to take care of you. And remember, oh wait, oh, so it's Edita cuts it at one and three quarters, yeah. So see, you go smaller and smaller until it just doesn't cover the other side where the seam is. Um, remember, you can get on thequiltshow.com, 1995 uh, COVID special, and that's for six months. Six months, 1995. I saw somewhere the other day where someone said, well, they're pricey. And I thought, oh, I don't think so. 1995 for six months. So um, I'm going to go for a walk. I don't think it's too hot yet. Nope. And then I'm going to go to Trader Joe's. And then I'm going to come and make more blocks for that. Okay. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.